Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Vail Customs. So today we're going to do a video series of putting together this nose art girl kit. Now this is a personal project. I did do a garage kit review on this a while back. And uh, when I saw it, I really had to have it. So if you want to learn a little bit more, uh, I'll put the link in the description. You guys can check out that video a little bit more in depth. But the idea of this video series is to show you that if you see an item you like, and you uh, love the sculpt or you like the theme but you want to change things up whether you're a woodworker, you're into cloth work or you do anything else you don't have to put the item together the way it's intended you can always change things up and that's kind of what I like to do so when I saw this kit I absolutely fell in love with it I said I have to have this kit in my collection Roberto is an amazing sculptor and I love it but I didn't like the theme of it uh, basically she is a military girl that's probably painting up a fuselage plane in an airport hangar uh, maybe it's like I think it's maybe set in the 40s or 50s I'm not really sure uh, but anyway I didn't like that idea but what jumped in my head right away when I first saw it and being you know went to art school and all that stuff I said this sculpt would look amazing if she's in the like uh, art studio and she's painting something up on a big canvas board whether it's a comic book picture I like that I want to get printed up and make it look like she's painting it or if it's something that I've gone out into the wilderness, like if I went on for a hike or I see something I really like, I could take that picture, put it into Photoshop, tweak it, make it look like it's being painted, print it out, and put it on a canvas board like she's painting it. So that's kind of like what jumped in my head right away. So that's kind of where I'm going with this item, but things might change as we I progress on the kit. We'll see how things go. But like I said... You don't have to do what's in the kit. So the kit comes with the female, comes with the ladder, this oval base, and all these other elements. But like, say if you're a good wood at woodworking and you're getting into the hobby of kits, you can actually scrap the resin wood and you can make your own actual real wood. You know, but you would have to make sure she gets onto the wood correctly and sort of rebuild it the way Roberto sculpted the wood here. You know. But, or you could change it different. You can actually come up with a little bit different thing. Uh, you can make her look like she's climbing up because this part goes over here into the wood notch. So you could fill this in here on her body and make it look like she's on something else. So there's a lot, a lot of other options. I mean, hell, if you didn't want her on this uh, ladder, you can have it make it look like she's painting the side of a house. I also toyed with the idea that maybe if I found like a Wonder Woman statue, uh, that is actually, you know, old and broken. I could actually break up this statue and make it look like she's painting a big marble statue or repairing it, you know, like in an art museum. So that's like another idea I had too down the line as well. But I still like the idea that she's kind of like an art uh, person, like painting a large uh, museum of uh, things. So these are things I just kind of think about. Now, one of the last things uh, I'll talk about before I actually start working on this is when I got this kit in the mail, uh, I also got the Harika Fire Elemental Kit too from Jesse from Garage Kits. Now, when I had these both kits on my shelf and I was doing all this stuff, uh, this head came with the kit. Now, I do like this head a lot, but um, I was like at the time uh, working on the Fire Elemental Kit and I really loved that head. I thought it was amazing. It was so well done from Roberto. It was nice and elegant. I said, you know what, let me see if I could take that head and if it kind of matches this body, just for fun. So, I put the head on it, and I said it absolutely matched, and it would look amazing on this kit. So, I took a gamble, I contacted Jesse from Garage Kits, I said, look, I would like to buy just the Fire Elemental head. Are you willing to sell me just the head? He said, yeah, but, you know, he said, I'm going to have to give me some time. And then after he gets his first run out to all his clients and he's not really, you know, pumping them out as much, he can actually have some time just to make me a head like a special order. So a lot of garage kit producers out there will help you out if you say, hey, I want two heads for the kit because I want to customize one. You know, what would the price be? Um, say that you like the, the arms on her, but you want to have a change of arm where she's holding one thing and then holding another. Sometimes producers will work with you. Other times producers will say, nope, I'm sorry. Once the run's done, that's it. I'm not doing any of that. So you never know if a producer's willing to work with you. So when I got the fire elemental head in the mail, because Jesse finally said, sure, it actually is going to be perfect for this kit. Now there is some tweaking. We're going to have to go through all that re-sculpting. But it's in the great. It's in the same position, so you can see this one is turned a little bit more. So this one is kind of like a little bit different. So I'm going to have to sort of probably break some of this hair, chop a lot of this out, 
and get her on the ladder at some point to make sure this head is positioned correctly. But this is going to look amazing once done. So like I said, this is my own little personal project. It's kind of what I want on my shelf. But I'm just going to show you guys that you can swap stuff out. Now, if you're working on like a 1-6 one you know, scale kit like this, and you didn't like this head, but you want, or you wanted to do a change of head, and you know how to kind of sculpt stuff, look at Hot Toys. Hot Toys heads are all over eBay. These people who sculpt these original heads, they are kind of in scale. So you could go over there and you could order one for like 15, 20 bucks or however they cost. You can rip off the, you know, real hair or if you want to leave the real hair on it. And you can actually chop some of that up and you can fit the head and then repaint it. You know, there's a lot of options out there if you're really sitting there to work and you could try new things. So I'm not going to go crazy on how to prep the kit. I've done that plenty of times in my other videos. So I'm going to, right now I got some free time. I'm going to go wash up the kit get it dried up, I'm going to do some priming, I'll probably get some seam work all cleaned up around the legs and arms, and then I'm going to start trying to figure out what our next step is. Do I build the ladder and get that situated and get her lined up on it so this way I can actually chop up the head? Uh, all this other stuff, I'm probably going to like go in a garage too and chop up all this military stuff. I think I'm going to take the pockets off because I don't like the pockets on her. Uh, I want to take those off. I want her just like a white collared shirt. Basically, it's going to be like uh, gray, blue jeans, and blonde hair. So I got my whole theme and my idea down. It's going to be a long journey because like this is kind of like a side project. But these are kind of things that I really want to work on and get like you know some other you know experience with maybe working with a nice wooden floor for her and stain it and then build like a wall behind it too, where it's kind of like you know a wall that's like in the studio. So there's a lot of things I'm going to try to do with this kit. So. That's where I'm at right now. I think it should be a fun project. I'm going to get this cleaned up, get ready going, and then hopefully when we come back, it's figure out what the next step is, whether it's working the arms with magnets, start chopping up the head to start lining that up, and maybe get the ladder at least kind of together so I can line her up and not really put it together yet. So there's a lot of things i got to think about. But it should be a fun series just to show you guys. Buy a kit, buy a superhero kit, an anime kit, a car kit, and chop it up and make your own thing out of it. So let's see how this project works out for the series. All right, so I'm in the garage, and what I like to do is I set up my shop vac in my vice grip uh, because I don't like to dremel and get resin dust all over the place. I try to keep it down as much as I possibly can. Uh, so I do have one dremel bit here, and I do have another dremel tool here with a tile cutting bit. I use pretty much... Anything that's going to get the job done. I mean, there's different bits. There's different bits, you know, higher, thicker bits, smaller bits. Uh, it really shouldn't be that hard. It's just a matter of kind of grinding out some of these areas. And then uh, I'll go back in with Aves and sort of fix up that stuff. But other than that, uh, we're looking pretty good. What I might do is I probably will, you know, take out this a little bit more in here because I like when I attach my pieces for good at the end. I like to make sure everything is secured. I don't like having like that much of a key with just some glue because it could pop out. Uh, just a personal preference. So also to be on the safe side, make sure you got some safety glasses on. Uh, if you want, you can wear a mask, but I usually just keep really close into the shop back so at least dust isn't going anywhere. I really don't want to breathe in this dust as much as possible, so keep it down.
So I want to double check my work. I want to make sure I am at the correct position. So when you put the original head on here, like so, uh, the neck is really long, which is fine, but the head is kind of positioned up a lot, and you would have to kind of paint the eyes so she's looking in this direction instead of straight on. Uh, but just to double check with my head that I'm putting on there, I think it will work pretty well. I kind of like it like it's up a little bit forward like this, uh, like she's a little bit more serious type look. Uh, if I go backwards up, the problem is I'm going to have to chop out some of this hair. So I think just to be on the safe side, I'm going to chop this hair off this way. And then when I, basically the idea is I'm going to mix up Aves. I'm going to smush Aves on there. And I'm just going to position the head where I want it when I'm ready. And then I'm just going to let it cure up. And then from there, I'm going to touch it all up, re-sculpt the hair and do whatever. So if I have it forward, it looks good. Uh, but I have to kind of position the eyes a little different. Uh, but that might work though too. I kind of like that. It's kind of look like she's actually like really pinpointed on her hand. So actually, I don't think I'm gonna have to chop up that hair in the back. Yeah, I might just this piece here. Like actually, we just break that off right now. What the hell? You know, like I said, I'm gonna re-sculpt everything. Yeah, so that gives me a lot more freedom to move the head. So I think I'm in a good position. What I want to do. Like I said, I was gonna re-sculpt a lot of this hair anyway. Uh, you can kind of see the difference. But yeah, that's going to make life a lot easier now. Okay, so now I'll be able to position it where I want it. I think I might still just kind of chop out a little bit here. Just kind of chop off the hair completely. And just make my life a lot easier to position this. And then I could go back in and re-sculpt later. Okay, so we're at a good spot. So I'll go chop that out. I'm going to use my gray putty here with my little rubber tool. I'm going to do some uh, putty work now. I didn't... Uh, heat up the garage enough to really kind of sit there and prime an item today because it's really cold out. So I'm just going to do putty work now and then when I go back in another day to prime, I could do some quick sanding on it, prime it up, and then start fine tuning. But yeah, we're at a good position. I'm really happy with it. Uh, so let's just uh, keep plugging away. So uh, I went in the garage, I Dremel out each uh, pretty much bar, and you can see it's like a big staple now. It's like a big uh, brass staple that's going to go into the wood. So what I need to do right now is got some BSI gel glue. I'm just going to kind of glue this down. Uh, what's going to happen is I will probably might over glue it a little bit, so I'm going to have to go in there and sand and clean it up, but that's not an issue. Uh, like I said, I want to create something a little bit in the center here that looks like it kind of bends up and down. Um, same thing with this one. Now this one had a little bit of a longer length to it. It didn't line up like this one. So I had to sort of, uh, you can kind of see it was just a little bit longer. So I just kind of like uh, took it down and I'll shave it down. I'll, I'm going to really work on these. So this is kind of something that I'm going to kind of work on a little bit. And then I can actually put the ladder together and then I can get her head on lined up. So I did uh, Dremel out the insides up there. So, uh, this way, when I'm ready to glue it together, I'll be able to glue this, and this will kind of, like, glue nice and together for now. And then what I could do is, once it kind of cures up, I could Dremel through here and really lock these into place. I'm just always so paranoid with my items. I don't feel, like, I know some people might just say, oh, you know, a couple drops of glue or whatever, and you're good to go. But for me personally, I always like to make sure stuff is super secured. So I'd rather have this thing secured than to break on me door and line after I do all my work. So, sometimes it's better to take these couple extra steps and get your item to go. So, I'm going to get this glued on, and then what we'll do is we'll come back when I'm ready to kind of sculpt a little bit onto these, and then uh, hopefully we can get the ladder together.
So I got some extra A's and I got a little bit of a rod here. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually attach this leg because it's going to be easier for me to paint it. Um, I know sometimes uh, people like to paint in pieces. Personally, I don't. I'd rather sit there and mask it so this way I can get all the colors even. I'm not a fan of trying to sit there and paint this piece and paint this piece and get it even. But then when I go to put it together, it doesn't look right or I miss some kind of a color or something. So... Uh, it's just a little bit easier for me to do that. And plus, uh, to get her lined up on the base correctly, because uh, I might try to add some kind of a pegging system in this leg, you know, this knee and this foot here, so she could go in and out of the ladder without having to attach it permanently. So it's a little bit tricky, and I'd rather have this lined up than to try to do this later. It's just, uh, just the way I like to work. So all I'm really going to do is just take this rod uh, in here, and I'm just going to add this in here with this Aves and just attach this with some glue, uh, get it set up because I also did break off this piece here, this little piece uh, came off there, and to try to get that little thin piece rebuilt and make the leg removable and break it again, it just creates more issues than anything. So let me just get this attached and then hopefully uh, the ladder will set up too and then I can actually start attaching her to the ladder and we can line up the head. So uh, as you can see, I got a lot of the ladder set up. Uh, this just helps secure it over here more. I put some metal rods and aves in there. I got to clean all that down. Uh, so right now what I want to do is I really want to secure it a little bit. See how it kind of wobbles? Uh, and you can see how the, it kind of goes up in an angle. When you close the ladder, old school style, um, you know, they're, they're kind of flat. And when you open it up, it kind of hits that like that angle. I kind of want to make it a little bit more sturdy. So what I did is I mix up some Magisculpt. I'm going to kind of layer it thick though. I'm going to cut four squares. I'm going to put those four squares or rectangles or whatever on the bottom of this uh, feet. I'm going to push the feet down onto them and I'm going to let it cure up. And then what I could do is the next day sort of sand it down and tweak it. So this way the ladder isn't moving at all like this. I don't like that moving. And this way, hopefully, this will kind of give a little bit more support. Anything to kind of really support this figure from tipping over or moving or whatever is what I want to do. So I'm going to go and get that set up probably over on the table behind me because that's leveled. And I can have it added away once I push this down. And then I could come back and we can see how it looks and sort of uh, set it up. Okay, so I've been working on this a little bit here and there. And I was a little bit stumped yesterday, but today I kind of came up with an idea which I wish I did now, but... Uh, over here I put a rod in this uh, knee and I set up this part over here which is really messy. Uh, the problem was is I didn't have enough thickness in there and I was afraid that I would break it because it was so thin. Uh, so I'm thinking, I thicken this up, I'm going to sand this down and grind it down. Uh, but what happened was the foot down here I needed to put a rod on there because she had those two little plastic pieces that were sticking out to kind of clamp onto there and I didn't like that. So I added a piece of metal here but before I did that when I sanded off the uh, pieces of plastic and I put her in there she would kind of swing inwards and I didn't like that she's got to look like she's stepping on that part of the ladder so uh, I added this little rod I put some uh, magic sculpt in there and this is really not thin it's really thin in there and I'm afraid it might break so I came up with the idea when I had this extra magic sculpt from working on something else why don't I roll this out make it a semi thick give it some texture and just drape it over here and then paint it like it's a dirty rag you know, maybe even break it up or something. Just make it look like it's a worn, dirty, painted rag that she's stepping on. And what I should have done is I probably should have done it up here, which I can still do it now. After I sand this down, I can still add it if I need to. Uh, but then it might look weird that she's stepping on a rag and her knee's on a rag. But what I could do is I can add another rag over here and make it look like the ladder's got a couple rags on it. So it's kind of fun to add a little extra stuff as you go along with your project and come up with ideas. 
So I really want to make sure she is really sturdy on this ladder and doesn't wobble, fall, or break, or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out this Aves, uh, I'm sorry, Magic Sculpt, give it a little bit of texture, and I'm going to drape it over. And then what I'll do is I'll put some baby powder on there, and I'll set her up on there. And throughout the rest of the night, I'll make sure that she doesn't really cure onto this or lock into place, because there's still some fresh uh, Magic Sculpt in here, and if you're not careful, they might bond to each other. Uh, but I think this should really set up pretty well where she's not going anywhere when she's on the, you know, the ladder. Okay, so uh, what I did is, you can see I added texture to it. I added a little kind of like an extra end of the towel like look to it. Wrapped it around and I put it on there with baby powder. So I got to kind of like let this sit and just kind of let it cure up. I got to watch it now for the next uh, two hours, make sure it doesn't bond. Uh, so this is just one of those uh, microfiber uh, towels that I have in the garage for my car. Uh, I was using a regular towel first and it just wasn't looking right. So I popped this out and this kind of gave me a better texture. So we got a little bit more of a ladder painting. It's kind of like a towel. And it looks like, you know, I can paint that up, give it a little bit of a look, and it'll secure up that foot area and thicken it up. So I might have to do it under her knee as well, maybe put another towel there. And then uh, maybe what I might do right now is add another towel over here. You know, have like three towels on there. It's not a big deal if there's a couple extras there. And, uh, or maybe add one around here at the corner. Like maybe there's one over here at the corner. Maybe that's what I'll do. Or maybe over here. So if there's a towel here or a towel there, I'll add one over here as well. Uh, or maybe I'll just put another one over here. Uh, maybe down the line. After I add all the ladder and I get everything together, maybe I'll add something and kind of build it up. But yeah, this works out a little bit better. She's definitely going to be more secure. And now I don't have to worry about that ugly, uh, um, two little prongs hanging out and it looks more flush now. Alright, so I got some extra apes tonight. I figure what the hell, let's get this head attached so we can start lining some things up since she's pretty much attached to the base. Uh, we got a lot of cleaning to go. So what I did is I threw some aves and a little metal rod there. We got some aves over here. Uh, I'm gonna throw some more back here as well. It's not gonna be completely seamed up tonight. It's just gonna be pretty much just there. So first we'll try just to see how this looks for now. See how this squeezes on. So the idea is to get her lined up with the neck and still find this piece. Kind of squeeze all this out. We're going to have to redo a lot of that. So I'm looking at my angle to try to make sure everything's lining up. That is lining up pretty well, so I think what I need to do is throw some more A's down, pop it back out, throw some more A's down, and then probably start adding a little bit of glue in there. I think that should work right about there. It looks pretty much good with the length. She's kind of looking at the piece. Yeah, so if there's a dab of glue I could put over there, but shove a bunch of A's over there, I think it should work.
So I glued this little piece on here, and what I did is I uh, dremeled out this part here. Uh, so this way when you put her back into the base like so, there's sort of a little bit of a gap. Not much, but a little bit of a gap over here. I want to add another towel around here, sort of to secure this piece and also make it look like she's kneeling on the towel and not on the bare wood. So I have some Aves over here, and I think I might make a little bit of a bigger towel. I don't know, kind of longer maybe. Just have some fun with this. So we'll kind of cut this down. Basically like just like we did before. So what we'll do is we'll cut this from here. Kind of liking the idea that this is um having a lot of like rags and stuff all over the place. Kind of just uh gives it a little bit more life. So this one's a little bit thinner. Just take those pieces, put it to the side. Grab your towel. Real towel. Just sort of Get all this stuff textured uh, as we can. And then we take this tool here and we kind of just Squeeze it up over here like so. Squeeze that a little bit over there like that. Sort of creates a little bit of a towel look. Probably hard to see. So all I'm going to do now is sort of get this part a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's try and do both sides just to be on the safe side. Texture, just kind of flatten that down a bit. That's the only thing that sucks trying to do both sides. I think that's good. So, what I want to do now is lift this up a bit, get out of the way there. So, so I don't mind if it looks like it's gonna get riled up or banged up or whatever. And we just gonna kind of take the towel. Sort of throw it over there like that. This will help like get the knee set up a little bit better over there. So what I do need to do is before we do that, make sure we clean out the whole area. Good. Baby powder. Oh, oh, can't forget the baby powder. Just in case anything gets kind of sticky on there. Take her. So once that cures up now, I'll go underneath and sort of lock it in place. It'll be a little bit messy underneath in there, but at least now we have, kind of push this up a bit. There we go. So now I got like another towel rag over there like so. So that's a, uh, I kind of like that, you know, it'll lock it into place. It'll, uh, you know, once we paint it all up and everything, it'll come together. 
adding a little extra stuff. So I was thinking maybe, eh, you know, maybe I can add another rag somewhere else or maybe I'll come up with something else down the line. But it's a good way to utilize some of my extra aves. So I'll let this cure up and see what things look like uh, tomorrow. So this whole custom is pretty much all over the place. I'm kind of jumping all over back and forth here and there. Uh, it's just the way this is working. It's, it's a side project. So whenever I have extra aves and stuff, I can work on this. So right now I got some extra fix-it skull because I was working on some hair on another item. And I pretty much have a little bit left. There's nothing really left going on on all the shelves because all that stuff is pretty much finished. So I figure it's the end of the night and I can kind of start working on the hair. So that's what's going to happen with the rest of this project. I'm going to have extra material and I'm going to just keep plugging away on it. So I'm probably going to use this material to kind of work around the shirt here and come down here and work around there because I think that's all I have enough. And then another time when I have more, I'll come work around here and do it here and kind of connect it. Uh, so I got to connect around there as well. But uh, I think once I pretty much get this head done with the hair, we can focus on the arms. And then after that, uh, we can really start fine-tuning it and prepping everything. And we're going to start planning out the diorama with the base and everything else we want to do with it. Alright, so uh, like I said, we're jumping all over the place. Uh, I did this stuff off camera because um, I was just really busy this week and I had so many extra materials. I figured while I was creating a magnet system on some other projects, I might as well do it on this one. So if you watch some of my videos, I go over this all the time on how I create these magnet systems. Basically, it's square steel uh, key stock in here, a hollow brass rod from KNS, magnets, magic sculpt. And basically you see it just connects. Now the next step is I got to mix up or whenever I have extra Magisculpt or A's when I'm doing a project, I'll squeeze it into this arm here and I'll squeeze this in there like that. You just got to make sure you don't put in too much because if you put in too much uh, and it bonds around the outside and then it bonds to this arm, you get messed up. Now I never do glue with this because if you do glue and you're not paying attention or you do a liquid ma uh, epoxy, it squeezes up into here into your magnet system and then you never get the arm out so you kind of create this whole system and you mess it up. It's better to do it with Magisculpt and Aves to the point where it pretty much uh, bonds up. So that's kind of where the arm is going on that one. And once I get it in there, it's pretty tight though. It's like a really tight uh, grab around this edge. So I might have to kind of just chisel a little bit out but it will work out pretty well. And then the same thing with this arm here. Once I kind of lock that in place, I'll have a magnet system. Uh, so what I need to do next is uh, when I uh, get a chance, uh, we'll mix up some nice fresh uh, Aves Fix It with a little bit of regular uh, Aves. We'll finish out the hair here. And then what I'll do is kind of clean it up and we'll close out this video. Uh, pretty much the ladder is almost pretty much there where we want it to be. The figure is pretty much customized. I'm um, putting the heels on later on at the projects. I don't want to snap and break them off. Uh, so I, hopefully we can finish this up. And then next video what we'll do is we'll start planning out the whole like uh, wooden floor. Uh, hopefully we'll plan out the mural which we'll be painting on. And we'll kind of get that rolling. And then hopefully if that works out pretty well. We can maybe finish it up with a third video of paint work. But we'll see how things go. But I'm just happy that a lot of this is going around pretty smooth. And we're getting there. So uh, let's get some stuff set up for this so when we get a chance and we'll finish this up. Alright, so I, I have a little bit of uh, A's mixed up with some, you know, work on some other projects. So basically it's fairly simple. Take this A's. I might need to mix up a little bit more or I might not. It all depends. Let's just see how this works out. So 
So usually what I do is I put that in there, squeeze this in here like so, and pop it out. So actually, I think that's a good position because what I like to do is take a, a tool, kind of squeeze this around, just get this around in there like so. I like it to sort of stick out like this. So this way I know it doesn't over squeeze onto here. So what I'll do is I'll put this back on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her on the ladder, make sure she's lined up correctly. I'm going to leave it alone. So this way, later on tonight, tomorrow, whenever I have extra A's again, I can actually go on to here and fill this in and kind of level it out. But for right now, I think we're looking pretty good. So I'm just going to leave this alone, and then what I might do is this, you know, if I have extra aids again, I could do it on the other one, and I get these locked in and nice and clean. So I need to get her on the base and to make sure it's all good for the day. All right, so I think this is a good point to end the video, so you can pretty much see how it's all working. I think the head worked out great. I absolutely love this head on there. Uh, she's nice and durable on the base now. I like to add the, you know, those, you know, uh, rags onto the base too as well. It really makes it pop a lot more. It's really going to like scream she's painting in the studio. Uh, when we go to paint her up though, maybe I'll add some paint on her uh, pants and stuff as well, her shirt. Just make it look like she is a little bit messy. Uh, but this is pretty much the pose we'll be looking at, especially when it's in my case. Uh, so I think that's going to work out pretty well. And uh, as of right now, all I really need to do is a lot of tedious work. i got to kind of get into some areas. Uh, clean up some hair stuff around there, sand down some of this area, wet sand. I got to clean underneath here when I took out the earring stuff over there from the neck. And just kind of go over the whole item. So, once that's done, uh, the next video where we're going to focus on mainly is setting up the whole, uh, you know, story in a diorama or a base or what you want to call it. So, I want to create a nice wooden floor with like planks of wood that is in scale to her. I just don't want to put planks, random planks of wood down that's not in scale to the character. So I kind of want to make it look like it's a wooden floor in a studio or art gallery and she's painting. And I want to create some sort of easel here that's very large that she's painting it. So I don't want the easel being straight. I want to kind of be in a little angle. So I got to look online about some easels. Maybe I could get some planks of wood, kind of make up my own little easel, come up with an idea. And the idea is to if I go out uh, hiking with my friend out in PA, I could take some nice pictures of landscapes and I can use that as a thing she's painting. Or if I walk down to the bay by me, I could take some pictures of a nice day of the bay and make it look like she's painting that. Do it in Photoshop, send it to this company that prints on canvas boards, wrap it around it, and go from there. And if I measure it correctly, and what I do, I can always sit there and make up another picture and kind of swap out the pictures as time goes on. So maybe one time she's painting a scenery or something, and another time maybe she's painting a comic book cover if I wanted to do something like that. Uh, so it's just kind of like fun idea I'm coming up with. But other than that, I'm happy with it. But sadly, like I said, it's going to be an all over the place video series because it's something I work on here and there as a side project. So I'm not really planning out the whole videos, but we'll just see how it turns out pretty well. Uh, I did do a little bit of this hair and some of this other stuff on the live stream only because I needed to fill up some time and I had it there so I kind of cleaned up the rest of that. So sometimes with this project you never know I might pop it on a live stream or something and go from there. But so next video we're going to do the whole diorama, the floor, the bait, all that stuff and then hopefully by the third video we can just focus on painting her up and then that'll be it. So we'll see how things plan out. So thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.